lecture 26 in the series of acoustic materials and metamaterials. So, we have already done two lectures on introduction to acoustic metamaterials. So, we know we have got a brief understanding of what these materials are and what are they composed of. In today's lecture, we will go through some historical development and study why the metamaterials came about and how they came about. So, let us go through the lectures. So, the history of metamaterials it began with the, the, the invention of negative index materials. So, this acoustic metamaterials came first from the metamaterials discovered for the domain of electromagnetic waves. So, what were these negative index materials? So, these were a type of materials that were used to manipulate electromagnetic waves and these were those metamaterials, these are those metamaterials that exhibit negative values of refractive index for electromagnetic waves at certain frequencies. So, usually most of the classic medium it has a positive refractive index. So, in any in for example, in general in optics most of the lenses that you use etcetera it all has positive refractive index, but certain materials could be made to have negative refractive index at certain desired frequencies. So, the here the refractive index would be a function of the frequency and at certain frequencies the value of the refractive index will become negative. So, those materials were called as the negative index materials. So, the people who are interested to know more about this topic can obviously go back in the literature and search for such materials, but they were used to manipulate electromagnetic waves. And then a similar concept was borrowed to build up materials which can manipulate sound waves. So, just like acoustic metamaterials such kind of negative index materials they also have a periodic arrangement of different unit cells. And in the same way the individual unit cells they are composed of conventional materials. So, unit cells itself they have positive value of refractive index within the normal range as found in the traditional materials, but the combined effect of a collection or arrangement of such unit cell will be that it is able to bend the waves very sharply in reverse direction or it attains a negative refractive index. So, this is the combined effect becomes negative refractive index. So, to show you to go briefly through the theory of this. Now, refractive index is defined as the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence and the sine of angle of refraction when an electromagnetic wave interacts with the boundary of the two different media. So, let us say if we see this figure here, this is medium 1, 2 and sound interaction is taking place at the boundary. This is theta 1 is the angle of incidence, theta 2 is the angle of refraction. Then the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 will be sin theta 1 by theta 2. And most of the times, so this refractive index is usually a ratio or a comparison of medium to one medium with another medium. And most of the times there is an absolute value of refractive index where the medium 1 is taken as vacuum. So, when the medium 1 becomes vacuum and the refractive index of vacuum is 1. So, if n is equal, so if n 1 is equal to 1 then n 2 by n 1 will be same as n 2 because n 1 is equal to 1 for vacuum. So, when vacuum when the first medium is taken as vacuum then the value of refractive index that you get for a medium becomes its absolute refractive index which is given by the same thing sin theta 1 by theta 2. Now, according to Snell's law, so every interaction it follows the Snell's law. So, by Snell's law sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 is C 1 by C 2, where C is the velocity of the wave in the respective media. So, when the sound waves they interact with any general medium, in that case their refractive index again I am restating. So, this is the overall expression n 2 by n 1 will be n 2 by n 1 or simply the refractive index of 2 with respect to 1 will be sin theta 1 by sin theta 2, which will be C 1 by C 2. So, this is the definition of refractive index and how it is related to the speed of sound in the two different media. So, refractive index ratio is the 
reverse of the speed of sound ratio in the two media. And I have explained this uh, concept to you again uh, previously in the lecture on acoustic metamaterial. So, if you refer to the previous two lectures, you can find this explanation there. So, the same explanation goes here also. So, let us say interaction is taking place and both medium 1 and 2 they have positive refractive index. So, in that case this is the equation. So, this is positive, this is positive and this theta 1 it varies from 0 to 90 degree. So, theta 2 is limited and it can only vary within this domain. But if one of the refractive index becomes negative so for the second medium. So, suddenly the sound the electromagnetic wave is propagating it hits the boundary of a medium which has a negative refractive index. So, in that case from this expression theta the theta t or theta 2 it will have a negative value. So, negative value of sign means it will bend somewhere along this zone. So, this uh, this is taken as the positive direction for theta t this is taken as the positive direction for theta i. So, this is the convention that has been being followed theta i this is the direction for positive theta i this is the direction for negative theta t sorry positive theta t. So, theta t negative means now it will bend towards this. So, this is the region of all the positive possible bendings that can take place. So, in such a case sharp bending can be obtained and with appropriate choice sometimes you can also have reverse bending. So, if this is of extremely high high negative value then this theta t can cross this particular region and it can go here. So, effectively what is happening is that you are you are uh, bombarding this material from a with a wave front in this direction, but it is not able to enter the material it simply comes back. So, if appropriate choice of n 2 is taken some negative n 2 is taken then theta t will be so large that it would not be able able to enter the material, but simply bent around the material and come back. So, that can be done and therefore, such materials they are heavily used to make some super lenses where very sharp bending of the uh, electromagnetic waves such as light waves can be obtained. So, this figure shows the kind of sharp bending from a negative index material. So, this is a periodic this is a periodic layer of unit cells. So, these are the various unit cells here. So, when the wave front is incident from this direction here, then it is not able to enter the material here it simply bends away and reverts its direction and goes back to this other medium. So, very sharp bending is obtained. Okay. Now, that we know that what is the significance of having a negative refractive index it can help in manipulating the electromagnetic waves in a very uh, strong way not that, that conventional materials cannot do. So, uh, because this is not a course on electromagnetics or on a course, a course on acoustic uh, optics. So, this uh, that is why uh, discussing about electric field and magnetic field is not within our domain. So, I will directly give you what how, how this particular concept can be applied to acoustic how it came to be applied to the acoustic domain. So, from the electromagnetic theory based on Maxwell's equation and Snell's law of refraction there are two critical quantities or critical parameters of a medium which is called as the permittivity and the permeability which is E and mu. So, these are the two important properties of a medium which define what will be its refractive index and the velocity is given by the velocity of the medium is given by mu E to the power minus 1 by 2 this is the velocity of the medium. And we know that the absolute value of refractive index will be what is uh, it is the inverse of the ratio of the speed of sounds. So, absolute value is simply the n of the medium by the n in the vacuum which is equal to n m by n naught. So, this uh, this absolute value n will be c naught by c m it will be the reverse of the uh, velocity ratios in the two medium. So, this overall n can be written as under root of mu into E. So, the refractive index can be written as root over of the relative permeability because uh, vacuum in vacuum 
this under root of mu naught e naught is equal to 1 and that is why n simply becomes under root of mu into e from this expression here. So, now we get is that this mu and e are the two critical parameters this is the permeability and the permittivity that can control the refractive index of a medium. And now we want to obtain a negative index material. So, how do you obtain this negative index material? The way to achieve this is make this E value and the mu value simultaneously negative. And therefore, such materials sometimes are also called as double negative materials because both mu and E are made negative at the same time. So, if at certain frequencies both these values become negative what happens is, so let us say both permittivity and permeability become simultaneously negative at certain frequencies. Then this mu value is a negative value, so it can be written as minus of its positive value. So, this is some negative value which I am writing it as minus, so let us say if it was 5, minus 5, so this is minus and the absolute value of this which is 5 e is also written as minus into its absolute value and the refractive index is root over of mu into e. So, this can be written as this expression. So, if you separate this two, so this becomes under root of mod of mu into mod of e. So, this is a positive quantity inside the square root and then you take this minus 1 factor out and this minus 1 factor out. So, you have 2 minus 1 under root. So, you have root of minus 1 from this one and you have root of minus 1 here. So, this is the breaking down of this expression. So, this is going to be a real number, but this is going to be j. This will be, this is going to be j, which is an imaginary quantity. This is going to be j. j into j is j square. So, j square into root of a positive number. So, overall this and j square is what? j square is equal to minus 1 because j is the root of minus 1. So, this value then becomes a negative under root of mu into e. So, when both mu and e are simultaneously made negative, you get a negative value of refractive index. And that is why double negative materials came into existence. So, the same philosophy is then applied two acoustic materials. So, let us uh, give you an analogy between the different parameters in electric in electromagnetics and acoustics. So, just like we had mu and E and we manipulated the value of mu and E to get a negative refractive index. In the same way for acoustic metamaterials, the critical parameters are B and rho, which is the bulk modulus and the density effective mass density. So, when they are simultaneously made as negative, then C will be, C is given as under root of B by rho and C naught is given by under root of beta by rho naught. So, anyways, the refractive index will be the reverse of this velocity value which can be written as some relative quantity. So, it will be rho, this you can write as under root of rho by rho naught by B by B naught. So, this becomes some uh, density with res this is like a relative density with respect to air. So, some relative density with respect to air and some relative bulk modulus with respect to air. So, this is how it can be written as the refractive index. So, when both rho and this value and this value are becoming negative. So, when this and this become negative, so the numerator will be negative, the denominator will be negative. Both of this rho effective will then become negative b effective will become negative because b and rho are negative, but b naught and rho naught for the for the air are positive. So, this is what we get. So, again using the same uh, thing which we get is 343. So, we can, uh, so some negative times of some number and some negative times of some number, you can take out this factor. So, what you so, basically what I am trying to say is that in acoustic materials the double negative does not exist experimentally, but theoretically it can be made. So, usually the refractive index can be changed or manipulated using this B and rho values 
and we already and I have already discussed with you in the previous class what happens when rho becomes negative and b is positive and what happens when b becomes negative but rho is positive. So, if either one of them becomes negative then we get an imaginary speed of sound and an imaginary propagation vector. And how do we interpret these two quantities here? If suppose some medium has negative effective density which means that the medium is expanding when it is experiencing some compressive force and the medium is contracting when it is experiencing some tensile or tensile force. And if B effective is less than 0 means it is a sort of a medium which accelerates to the left when it is being pushed to the right and vice versa. Now, you have to take this into uh, consideration that none of the naturally occurring materials will actually have a negative rho effective or a negative B effective. So, none of the materials which are found traditionally they have a negative value of B and rho, but when, so when they are arranged in the form of unit cells and they are arranged periodically the combined effect comes out to be negative B or a negative rho. So, let us, uh, so this was a history of how the concept of negative index material was applied to acoustic metamaterials. Now, based on this some of the early acoustic metamaterials were proposed. So, here you see here is that the concept of this metamaterial and specially acoustic metamaterial was proposed by a scientist called Victor Georgevic Visilago in 1967 and it was proposed analytically. So, there was just a theoretical concept that such kind of materials can exist, but it is an irony that it was an idea much ahead of its time. So, almost 33 years later the first acoustic meta material was actually made and tested experimentally. So, almost 33 years after its first proposal did we see an experimental verification. So, it came in the year 2000 and the first acoustic meta material which was fabricated was called as the sonic crystals. And we know that the meta the acoustic meta materials they can either be of type of negative density or they can be the type of negative bulk modulus or then there can be double negative materials. So, this sonic crystal which was proposed was a uh, meta acoustic meta material with negative bulk modulus. So, it worked on the principle of negative bulk modulus. So, you can see here the unit cell is actually a hard lead ball which is covered by a rubber. So, here 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter diameter lead ball was used which was covered by 2.5 millimeters layer of silicon rubber and they were arranged in such kind of cube. They were put together in a cube and it was an 8 cross 8 cross 8 cube. So, this was the kind of material proposed and the transmission coefficient. So, this was experimentally made and then sound wave was impinged on it and the, uh, the spectrum at the other end was noted and the transmission loss was computed. So, what was the transmission coefficient? So, this is not transmission loss, this is tau, the value of tau. So, higher the value if higher, so a lower value of tau means less transmission which means higher transmission loss. So, as you can see here in this particular material it does not follow the mass frequency law because according to mass frequency law ideal mass frequency law if this is tau and this is f then as frequency increases the transmission should go down because uh, because obviously the performance will improve. So, this should be like the curve or something like that a uniform decline, but here as you can see this the traditional materials they follow this decline curve, but this particular material here. So, this was what uh, the when the individual balls they were their transmission coefficient was noted it was found to obey this traditional mass frequency law but the combined effect was this. So, the, although it did follow the mass frequency law, but 
there were two areas where a major dip was observed. So, as you can see even at a very low frequency suddenly you are getting a very high dip compared to at high frequencies. So, what it means is that even at this low frequency of 400 hertz the material can be can provide a very heavy transmission loss suddenly at a low frequency. So, this was observed. So, this is the region where it showed exceptional values. So, the second form of the major acoustic metamaterial was then proposed in the year 2004. And for all of this I have given you some sources which you can study as an additional reading if you are further interested to study about them. But I will cover the sonic crystals in our later lectures in a detailed manner. So, the second material was in 2004 it was proposed by Liu and Chan. This was a double negative acoustic metamaterial. So, it was theoretically proposed which will have negative bulk modulus and negative effective mass density, but so far experimental verification is still not concrete. Then finally, in 2008 the first complete model of a membrane type metamaterial came into being. And after this lecture we will begin with our discussion of this membrane type metamaterial in detail. So, here the unit cell is what we have a we have a small waveguide or a small di sub wavelength diameter tube and in that you have some stretched membrane. For example, you can have a stretched rubber attached on the top like this. So, this is the stretched. So, here a stretched rubber was, rubber was used, but any stretched elastic membrane can be used and this is a section of a waveguide. or in other words this is a small section of a, a heavy but hollow tube. So, a tube made of a heavy material but hollow inside. So, this is a hollow tube and an elastic rubber or an elastic membrane is attached on the top. And this particular meta material it works on the principle of negative effective mass density. So, the transmission loss that is observed for this kind of material as you can see here is that this is again tau expressed in as percentage to transmission expressed as percentage. So, here also what you see is that at some low frequency region suddenly you observe a very sharp dip which is not expected because at low frequencies the transmission loss is going to be less for a traditional material. But a heavy dip is observed at these values. So, this is where the material is breaking the mass frequency law. It is showing you exceptional transmission loss or a very heavy noise control even at low frequency. So, this is the kind of material that was used 6 millimeter diameter circular steel disc, 300 milligrams of fixed mass at the center of the membrane. So, this is a mass attached here. So, this was a unit cell and it was arranged periodically in this series manner. So, a long wave guide having this unit cell and some sound was impinged from this end and it was noted in the other end and a heavy transmission loss was seen. Similarly, in 2019 a very famous experimental work was conducted by Zhang, Yin and Fang. All these sources are given here. You can study these papers separately if you are interested to do some further reading on how the what is the progress and the development of the meta materials in the last 20-30 years. So, here what they demonstrated was a practical application of bending due to a meta material. So, what they designed was they designed a flat layer of material. So, usually a lens is of this form, but this is not what they used. They designed a flat layer of material which was able to focus the sound waves by achieving very sharp bending. So, this was the kind of equipment that was used and here they demonstrated how this particular meta material was could be used to focus 60 kilohertz of sound waves. So, this shows the setup used and this shows a typical graph. So, here this is the graph of uh, this is the graph of the focusing of the 60 kilohertz wave. So, as you can see this the wave is being focused here is only 60 kilohertz 
and this is the wavelength. Now, depending upon where the focusing, so what is the focal length? So, depending on the frequency, the focal length used to vary. So, different frequency waves could be bent together and could be focused at a point at different distances. So, this shows a variation of the focal length with the frequency. So, what it means is that a 60, so this is in kilohertz. So, which means that a 60 kilohertz wave will be focused at a distance of 60 point 60, let us say about approximately 62 millimeters away from the layer of material. Similarly, it will be able to focus a 64 kilohertz wave at a distance of So, all this, this is just, so at a distance of approximately 45 or 46 millimeters away from the layer of material. So, the kind of lens can be designed which can be used to bend the sound waves, bend the sound waves very sharply and focus them at a particular point. So, with this I would like to end this theoretical lecture on the various progression and the history, historical development of acoustic metamaterials. Thank you.